Hi everyone, uh, today I want to show you the process to modeling this helmet, the Stormtrooper helmet. So let's start. The first thing I showing you here is that I am using the units in centimeters into the system unit setup and inside the display unit scale. So let's start loading the reference and I will create a plane and I will adjust uh, the, the basic size, just uh, one meter, uh, 100 centimeters. I will create a standard material with the image and I will apply this material to this plane to use as reference. So let's take a look. I am creating the material. I am enable, enabling the preview in viewport and then I will add the UV modifier to adjust the correct uh, distribution and, and the proportion. Then I adjust the pivot and there I can copy this object and adjust again the, the pivot of the UV modifier to select the correct uh, image in the correct or, or the respective viewport. So let's take a look right now. I am adjusting the viewport. Uh, you can see I have the shadow, so I am disabled the realistic to remove the shadow. Now I move the gizmo uh, and flip to see the, the helmet in the opposite direction. When I have this, I can move the objects uh, to create some sort of uh, L uh, shape of L and there I, I can have this corner created and place in the right position to start creating the helmet. Okay, I will freeze those objects to avoid any any issue maybe moving or something like this and I have to disable the show frozen in gray to keep them visible. So like you can see, I try to click over them and I cannot select them. It's just uh, a thing I, I recommend. Then I will start creating the first part of the mask. I will center in the X axis. Like you can see my reference are not perfectly centered, so I will unfreeze and move them manually. And then I will freeze them again. Okay, now I have the plane, I will convert to editable poly and I will delete one of the half of the object because I will work with symmetry. So like you can see here is I am entering the sub-object level vertex and I am adjusting based on the reference. Now you can see the quality is not good enough so I will go to the viewport configuration to increase the quality to this will allow me to see the the viewport texture more uh, r more precise. So like you can see here, I have increased a little bit the quality of the reference, and this way I can work uh, a little bit better. Okay, so I will continue moving the subobject to the vertex subobject level, and using the edge, I can press Shift key and drag to create new geometry then I can just move it and adjusting uh, based on the reference. Like you can see here, I can drag using the edge and the shift key, and then I can move the vertex to the right position. Something that you will see during all the tutorial is that both reference are not perfect aligned. So in some cases, uh, the, wh what I see in the front view is not exactly what I see in the left view. So it's, it's just a matter of, th this reference works as a guide, so it's not completely precise. So you, you have to decide in some cases which reference you want to follow. Then I have add a symmetry modifier that like you can see I have to flip to see in both sides. And then I add the shell modifier to add some sort of of yes of th thickness to the object. Then I can add the turbo smooth to see how this geometry will looks uh, in a subdivided way. 
something that you will notice is that the uh, corners are rounded right now. So what I need is to add more subdivisions to avoid these uh, rounded uh, corners. So I will connect and I will move the connection close to the edges, close to the borders to reduce this uh, smooth effect that like you can see here. When I have all this connection close to the borders, the shape is preserving the the hard surface or the yeah the the sharp edges. So I will do exactly the same in any corner I want to preserve and I want to avoid the smoothness effect. So let's take a look. Also, I will add some uh, subdivision in the interior. So inside the shell modifier, I can increase the segments. Or I can convert to editable poly and select all the edges and make a connection. This way I can create only two connection and I can move them close to the border. So let's take a look. I connect and I will move the connection close to the border and I will preserve this sharp look uh, when I uh, add the turbo smooth modifier. Okay, there is still a, a border that I think I need to adjust. So let's make some adjustment using the vertices and see how it looks right now. Now you can see I am working on subdividing the, the geometry to increase the quality. Right now, the, this corner, this round corner is looking not some faceted. So I will include more uh, detail. I can increase the turbo smooth subdivision or I can include a new uh, connection to improve this, uh, the, the overall quality. So I will add more subdivision just to have more detail. Like you can see here, I can have one connection and this connection will increase the detail of the corner. We have to take care to avoid maybe uh, having sharp edges. Right now I'm moving the vertices to preserve the round but with a little bit more detail. You have to take care when you are subdividing to dividing to match uh, the geometries, it will make more complex to adjust because a small adjustment will affect the overall look of the of the geometry. So in this case, I am adjusting this manually uh, following the reference, but like I said, in some cases, the reference are not quite precise. So you have to decide by yourself uh, how far you want to go with the adjustment and do some manual adjustment. Okay, right now let's start with the helmet. For this object I will create a box and I will place it. The idea of this uh, workflow is to have a box subdivided and then I will remove uh, the, the, the faces that I don't need. So I have this box subdivided with not too many uh, polygons, then I apply a Spherify modifier to have this round shape. Then I can scale, place close to the, the reference, like you can see. And when I'm happy, I will convert to editable poly and I will delete all the faces that I don't need. Remember that I will work with symmetry so I will move the object close to the center and I will apply the FF modifier that will allow me to adjust more vertices with less control points. So you can see I am adjusting those control points uh, using the, the reference. 
And when I'm happy, I can convert to editable poly. This process will, it will be something quite completely manual. So I have just to adjust the vertices uh, based on the reference. So I will make all the works uh, using just the, the vertex and, and moving them manually. You have to take into consideration that in some cases, when we use the symmetry, we forgot to apply, to apply the flip option. So don't forget to apply the, the flip to see the, the object. Now with the turbo smooth, we can see that the object is a little bit small. So we have to adjust and take this into the consideration. For this, I will add again an FF modifier and I will adjust using the turbo smooth on all the modifier stack enabled to see exactly how far I have to go and, and be more close to the reference. When I'm happy, I can collapse or convert to editable poly again and continue adjusting or making some adjustment with the vertices. The thing here, I am adjusting the vertices, trying to follow the shape of the of the helmet. In this case, I will move this vertex and I will try to adjust them to preserve this the, this shape because then later I will add this detail to the object. So I am creating the topology of the geometry, and like you can see here, this is the main idea of the topology of the of the helmet. So I will start adding those details. To achieve this, I will use the cut tool and I will start cutting the geometry and following more or less what I have drawn. Like you can see, just a, a couple of clicks and then I have to connect the, the vertex. The vertex you see here that are uh, not connected needs to be connected to some vertex so I continue cutting the geometry and then I will connect them. Remember to preserve as much as you can faces of only four uh, sides or four vertex to, to uh, have a better subdivision surface. As you can see here I am almost done. The only thing I need is I need to connect the vertices that I have here that are not connected to anyone. So I will con create some edges. I will connect them and then I will make a flow connection like you can see here. I can insert a loop and then set the flow to preserve the curve I have on the helmet. Or then I can just make a connection and move them ma manually. In this case, I insert loop and set flow. Now you can see it preserves the curve of the object. Then I can just make a, a connection between vertex. Now you can see here all the changes I made in the side view. Uh, I, I need to adjust them in the front view to preserve the, the, the shape of the helmet, to preserve this round shape. So in this case, I will enab enable the, the turbo smooth and, and see how these vertex affect the, the overall shape of the helmet. Like you will see in the next couple of minutes, this process is a um, completely manual uh, process. This requires a lot of observation. So you need to take uh, a lot of in consideration to the all the viewports you need to move to the top to the side to the front view to see if, if you are achieving exactly what you want so let's take a look and see how I am mm, adjusting the this couple of vertex right now I think uh, I have more or less what I want uh, there are still some missing details that like you can see here this corner need to be adjusted 
but I will make this adjustment later. So uh, I will make a small adjustment here and I will continue with the bottom part of the helmet. So let's see that, that everything is more or less close to what I want. So I will continue with the bottom part. For this, I will create again a plane. I will center, I will convert to editable poly and I will start working in the mid half part of this plane. Remember, like you can see here, this object have an asymmetrical shape. I will avoid this detail, so I will model everything like it is a completely uh, symmetrical object. And later, I will show you how to make this uh, modification. So like you can see, I am repeating exactly the same workflow. I just adjust the vertex, then use the edge with the shift to create new geometry and then I will just uh, adjust the vertex using the reference. It's exactly the same workflow, so like you can see, this workflow could be applied to almost all these helmet. I am avoiding the detail of this hole, like you can see in the reference, because I will create the entire helmet first, and then I will move to the details. So like you can see, I am creating big uh, surfaces. I am not creating a small uh, uh, parts of the helmet. I am trying to create big areas to avoid the, the, the having too many edges or vertex to adjust. So remember we are working in a, some kind of uh, 3D version, low poly version of the object. So you don't have to be too precise or, or spend too many uh, uh, minutes uh, uh, creating details. You have just to create the overall shape and then you can refine it as, uh, as much as you want. Now you can see here I'm scaling the, the edges to create a, a shape that is completely in the, in the middle. Then I connect to create a subdivision and like you can see here I have more or less the overall uh, connections that will be later attached to the uh, top part of the helmet. Then I add the symmetry modifier, and as like you can see, I have the overall shape of the, of the bottom part. Here I am creating new geometry. For this, I am just selecting the edges, and with shift, I am dragging and creating the, the detail I want. I just uh, select a couple of edges, not all of them, and then later I will connect them. So like you can see here, I just moving them, trying to follow the reference. And then I can create new geometry using the shift and drag, and then I can uh, attach the vertex, I can collapse them. Now you can see here, I am seeing the back part of the helmet. I don't want to see it right now, so I can hide them. All those polygons, I will, be, I will hide them. Later, I can turn them on. I will continue with the same process, just dragging the edge and attaching or connecting the, the vertex. To connect them, I can just uh, make a collapse. I can select them, um, select the collapse button. You can use uh, a different workflow. For example, in this case, I can just <coughs> select the vertex and, and make a connection or make a target weld or, or the collapse. Now you can see here I am drawing more or less the, the overall topology I want for the object. So like you can see, this is something important when you are modeling. You, you have to know more or less how you will create the topology of your object. So this is the uh, something that I want to achieve. So in this case, I will delete these uh, polygons and I co will continue just with this particular edge, creating the the basic shape of the of the helmet. You can see I'm just dragging the edge and adjusting, uh, following the reference.
like you can see what I'm doing is just moving vertices and creating a uh, new surfaces trying to not not spend too much time and and try to not add too many details so so just small details not too much so right now you can see I am create creating the the smooth areas and then what I need is I have to fill all those holes so for this I will drag more or less what I want to achieve and later I will create some connection or some polygon something like that As you can see here I'm drawing more or less what I want to connect them I can just make a connection I can try to follow the the guidelines I have created Now you can see I can fill those gaps or those holes using the the bridge option I will turn on the mesh now you can see I can bridge or I can cap to close or to fill those holes to um, change from solid to x-ray mode you can press alt x now you can see here I'm connecting And using the shift and drag I can create new geometry that later I can use target weld to connect to other geometry other other vertex in this case I will connect and I can make a bridge and then I can just cap the polygons so that you can see here I have more or less the overall geometry I will change the colors just uh, a personal taste I really I really like this blue color and it's more clear for me so like you can see I am adjusting the the topology there's something that I want to achieve so I want to preserve the this flow of the of the edges so I, I can make some adjustment connecting the vertices and, and creating a new topology for the object Like you can see I am connecting new vertex and I am removing pressing backspace to remove the edge and make the new connection this way I want to have to a different uh, topology for my helmet like you can see here I can connect and then make a vertex connection and remove all these uh, edges that I don't need. Remember, try to preserve as much as you can the faces with four uh, sides or four vertex. This will improve the subdivision sur surface workflow. Okay, like you can see, I have a uh, small details that I have to manually adjust. This will require a vertex adjustment and moving from different angles. So let's take a look. I am just adjusting from my point of view. Remember that I am not using precise view uh, blueprints. So in some cases, maybe these require a manual interpretation. Okay, so now let's find the, the faces I had uh, hidden. So let's go to unhide all. And let's continue filling the the missing parts the missing face inside this object so like you can see here I will attach both geometries because I want to start uh, creating the, the the missing faces the missing part so for this I will drag using the shift and then I will start uh, making the adjustment to, to have or to follow the the shape of the of my geom geometry now you can see all this workflow is almost the same so in some cases it's very repetitive task it's just a matter of adjust 
uh, with shift creating new geometry and then moving the vertex and in this case just using the the edge to create new faces and bridge uh, or or collapse vertex so that you can see here i'm moving the vertices following the the shape of the helmet and what i will going to do right now is just i will fl first i will target weld and then i will bridge let's change the color again and bridge to to join this geometry that like you can see everything is keeping the the the, the same number of or should ha uh, preserve the uh, same amount of edges so like you can see here i need to make some adjustment to allow me to create a precise bridge so for this i will add a new subdivision a new connection and now i can select the edges and make a bridge Now you can see now with the turbo smooth enabled I will make the adjustment to be more close to the reference. This is something important when you are working in, in the low poly version the the reference uh, will will look different but because the turbo smooth will reduce the overall size so in some cases you need to work preserving this uh, enable now you can see here there is an error this is because the vertex was not welded correctly so like you can see here there is an, an an issue here so i will i will fix it now you can see i having this issue uh, this issue is because the, the the faces are not welded good enough or maybe there is a missing like you can see here the, the object the vertex is was not welded so i will make a target weld and everything is working right now i will continue just adjust making some adjustment a small adjustment to try to be more close to the reference As you can see right now I having more or less what I want I will continue creating the interior of the the helmet I will uh, create this new vertex I will collapse all all those vertex I can just use the collapse button and I will move this to the centers to the zero uh, in the x-axis now like you can see i have more or less the overall shape of the helmet what i need right now is try to preserve the hard edges Tr try to avoid or remove this smooth effect so for this i will repeat the same workflow i will add edge close to the to the borders and this way i will preserve the the detail you can see here it looks more sharp okay what I want to do here is I want to add uh, the sharp effect in, in some other parts of the of the helmet so I will make some adjustment into the vertex remember that this is a completely manual process so it needs a lot of observation so when you feel that everything is in place you can move to other part what you see here is that i need a completely sharp uh, edge for the for the corner so in this case i can make a chamfer and this way i will create the the detail i want but what i will have here is uh, i will have a a face with not not uh, the amount of uh, vertex i want remember i mentioned that we try should try 
to have faces with four vertex. In this case, I have one face with three vertex. This is not something bad. In some cases, you can you can have it. But what I want to show you is that there there are uh, new workflows that tries to to avoid these kind of, of things using, for example, something called a crease set. I will show you how it works in case you want to take a look. Like you can see here, you have the open suit div and we have the crease set. So removing the turbo smooth and adding the open suit div will replace the turbo smooth. And what, it, what is important here is that we can use the create crease set to define uh, some tension to the edges. So this way I can just select the edges in the corner, create set, and I can increase this uh, edge tension. And the open sub div will read this information. And uh, you can see, I, I don't need it to create more detail. I can use this uh, new workflow to all the geometry. This is something mm, not supported in all the, uh, the situations. There are some game engines or, or some uh, other software that didn't support that. So I am just using it to show that there is another way to do it instead of using the subdivision workflow that, that is the more common one, one. You can use this to add more detail, more sharp effect to your edge. Uh, and this is another option, so just in case you want to take a look. Like you can see, it looks very nice. OK. Continue with the modeling. I will create the bottom part. For this, I will select all the edges. Remember, I can do this just pressing double click on the edge. So right now, I will move the vertex. I am adjusting just the all the all of them at the same time, and with the Alt key I am dis deselecting the vertex. So I will adjust manually. And try to follow the the overall shape. Remember that there are a lot of artistic uh, ap approach here, so it's not completely precise, and you cannot. Uh, follow completely the the blueprint because yeah there, there are not enough information so you have to guess uh how, how this uh, should works or should should be in the real uh, helmet so in this case i just guess that this is the way it is and i think it works Okay, so right now I'm just moving the vertex to the center and see how it looks with the turbo smooth applied, with the open sub div applied. Okay, what I want right now is I, I want to keep the, the shape more close to the reference. As you can see here, I need more detail, so I will double click over the edge and I will apply a chamfer to have a sharpened shape of this part of the helmet. I can use it with the subdivision or using the crease set. As you can see, to avoid uh, more subdivision, I can preserve the, the same uh, edge I have and see how it looks if I increase the tension. When I'm happy with the result, I will continue adjusting the with the vertex, trying to follow the the shape or the reference. Okay, when you are happy with the overall shape of the object, 
uh, what, what I, will, I will do is I will remove or uh, split the, the bottom part of the helmet. You can see the, the original model uh, have a, uh, is made of different two different parts. So what I want is to have a sharp uh, separation between those uh, two parts of the helmet. For this, I will select the edge and I will split. What uh, this means is I will break the geometry. So that you can see I have two different uh, groups or, or polygons. So I have a sharp separation between them.